Welcome. In a previous video, I set up some uh, air fault monitoring for my water heater. I'll put a link in the description of that. In this video, I'm going to talk about a temperature monitoring setup I have using a Raspberry Pi. And I'll put a link in the description to the things I use in this video. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So what I have here is a Raspberry Pi. And then I have a prototyping board here. And I have these uh, temperature probes. And I should have memorized or written down the what model these are. Um, they're very common. And I have these hooked into this prototyping board here, hooked into the Raspberry Pi GPIO. So um, on these pins here, I have this uh, first pin on the left. I don't know the pin number, but it's uh, towards this direction, is the 3.3 volts. And then this is the data line. So this is 4 over. So if this is 1, 2, 3, 4 over. And then if we go 3 over and up 1, we have our ground. So on the prototyping board here, we have the 3.3 uh, volts in the ground going on these two here. And then I have the sensors with the red and black wires hooked up to the 3.3 volt and the ground here. And then the data wire here is hooked up in this line here. And that's connected back to the data on the GPIO. Okay. And then this is connected up with a, I think it's a 4.7K uh, resistor. I'll put a link down below which one this is. So that's the wiring for this. So I have these here. And then I'm going to show how I... I haven't hooked these up to my water heater yet, so actually I'm going to do that in this video. So we'll go over to that. Okay, so now I'm at the water heater now, and I have the hot and cold pipes. And I'm going to be attaching one probe to the cold and one to the hot. So I'm going to pull back this insulation here, and I have this copper riser coming out of the water heater. I'm going to be using this extreme tape, and I'll put a link in the description of this. This is a, a silicone uh, self-bonding tape. And I'm going to take a piece and put it over the probe like so, almost like a bandage. And that's in case, I don't know if this will react with the copper. So I'll just uh, coat it so I know that won't be an issue. So I'll do about like that. Okay. And then I'll get a piece to wrap around the copper pipe to attach it. So I'll take the protective coating off here and I'll hold it up. I'm gonna want this wire to come out the slit in my insulation. So I'll press this up against the pipe. I'll take some more of this tape and I'll take, oops, <laughs> need to hold that better. Okay, so now I'll take this tape and I have to take the protective coating off of it and I can stretch it super, super tight around here. And that should give me really good contact. Okay, so that's connected. So this tape, um, later on, I can just cut this. And you know, it almost seems like I could use like electrical tape, but electrical tape gets kind of nasty and sticky. This stuff um, works well with high heat and it's um, you know super strong and just sticks to itself. So next I'll take my insulation and I'll, oops, I pulled the tape off a little. Put that back on. And I'll wrap this around. And then I'll close it off there. Okay. So I'm not going to get exact, you know, temperature of the water in here, but um, this is close enough. I mean, you know, I'll be able to do relative measurements here. So I probably will maybe put something around this um, insulation to hold it close to. This is the cold side. I'll do the same. No, this is the hot side. I'll do the same thing to the cold side, and then I'll show on the computer how we set up the software. Okay, so I'm logged into my computer now, and I have the uh, Raspberry Pi set up in this terminal here using an SSH session. And then on the left, I have the instructions. So this is, I'm using this uh, temperature machine. Um, I'll put a you know, link in the description to all this. And it's software you can install. It's pretty easy to install. So first thing you need to do is set up one wire support. Um, you, you can run this command here, although I have a different uh, thing in mind, so I'll show that to you. 
So you see this DT overlay equals uh, W1, that's uh, one wire, dash GPIO. So I have that same here. Then I have comma GPIO pin equals four. So that's the uh, pin that we're reading the temperature data off of. And then you want to reboot after you enter that. And then it says set up the app get to recognize the temperature machine repository. If you run that and then you try and run update, it doesn't work. So I'll show you how I fix that. So I'll type cat forward slash Etsy forward slash app forward slash sources dot list. And I'll make that a little wider here. There we go. So you see it uh, talks about adding this uh, dev repository. So you need to put bracket trusted equals yes, close bracket between dev and HTTP for when you do this. So you could run this command and edit it, or you could you know, add that in before you run this command. So that adds the repository. And then um, you can skip step three here and uh, go to step four. And we you type in sudo app get update and then sudo app get install temperature dash machine. So once you do that, the server will be up and running, or, or well, that'll install it. So then um, you want to type temperature dash machine dash dash init. It'll ask you if you want to run it as a client or server. So you want to say you want to run it as a server. And then um, this has lots more capabilities, but I'm just keeping it to the basics. So once you get that up and running, you want to look at your IP address. So you can type IP space A, and I'm running this on Ethernet. So I did um, this IP address here. And you put that in a web browser and then do colon 11900. So once you do that, you'll get the web interface for this uh, temperature logger. So I'll refresh this here. So I set this up yesterday afternoon, uh, probably almost 24 hours ago. Let's see. Yeah, it was almost 24 hours ago. So the downside of this software, not the downside to everyone, but to me is that it um, tracks in centigrade as opposed to Fahrenheit. And I don't have any reference for this. We don't use that in the US on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, people in the US know uh, measurements in metric and imperial, but a lot of people don't have a good idea of what temperature is. We use Fahrenheit for day-to-day -day temperature. So this is a graph of my water heater temperature over the past 24 hours. And this top one is the hot side. I didn't choose these colors. It did this automatically. I probably should have swapped these <laughs> so the red would be at the top because the uh, top one is the hot water side and the bottom is the cold water side. So you can see um, here that when the hot water side gets hotter, the cold water side gets colder. And that kind of makes sense. So if you turn the hot water on, um, wa hot water will flow through that pipe. That'll increase the temperature of the pipe. And then water will flow through the cold uh, water pipe from the ground, and that'll lower the temperature. And you can see there's a huge swing here. So um, here, um, this would have probably been someone taking a shower maybe. So the, the hot water heated up quite a bit the uh, cold water went down, and then you can see the cold water went up. So what probably happened there is that you shut the shower off and the hot water heater is still heating and it doesn't have a place for that heat to go, so it goes back up the cold side. So you can see the cold got about as hot as the um, hot side, and then the cold dropped back down here. And you can see that this is probably uh, someone taking a shower and then turn the shower off. Someone taking a shower, turn the shower off. So. This weirdness here is, um, I just had it unhooked because I just made the video. You can see this is way up here now compared to here. Before I just shoved those probes in there, I didn't have them uh, secured with the silicone, silicone tape, and this has the silicone tape on it. So now we're getting, you know, 47.18C. So I'm gonna convert that real quick. And that's a 116.92 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's, um, this wasn't tracking quite as accurately, I don't think. Now it'll probably track a little bit more accurate. So uh, my temperature, I took a thermometer under my tap and turned it on. And I had, I think it was 125 degrees Fahrenheit and like 50 degrees Celsius, um, which is what you want your water heater at minimum to um, you know, keep Legionnaire's disease from growing and things like that. So I'm measuring this off the outside of the pipe. So I'm not getting the exact water temperature. I imagine it gets pretty close and I can track trends. So I can see, you know, this go up and down, up and down, things like that. And uh, there's probably other temperature tracking software. This is the first one I came across. If you know of a different one that I might like better, go ahead and put a comment down below. So, so that concludes the uh, water heater temperature uh, monitoring software. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.